So I, uh, I got into the studio this morning, and my first thought was I wanted to open the show and spend some time talking about this Donald Trump Ted Cruz feud that's a brewing in the Republican Party, but I think we'll postpone that slightly. Also want to mention our top county prosecutor. Grant Loebs is going to be in studio with us coming up in the next hour of the program. Actually, what I'm going to talk about in the first few minutes is something I was mentioning to him yesterday. We were talking about a few issues and how they impact our, our culture, our communities. And, uh, and, and I told him a story about something that happened uh, in my personal life to somebody that I happened to know last week. And I actually wrote a post about this at our website. If you go to the section called Collie's Commentary, you can see that at News Radio 1310 KLIX. I grew up in a, as many of you know, I think I've shared this with you before. My hometown is a, it's a beeline. If you, if you, if you, if you flew like a bird and you didn't have to go around bends and corners and the like, I grew up in a very little town in the southwestern corner of upstate New York, about 58 miles south of Buffalo. I think it's the crow flies. And we were the second biggest town in my county with a population of about 3,000. So it's smaller than Kimberly, Idaho, uh, which is our main suburb here just outside of Twin Falls. If I go outside and start walking to the south, I may end up, may end up hitting that. So it's, it's smaller than that. Yet it was the second biggest town in my county. I think the, 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 one of our neighboring towns had about 5,000 people, and it looked larger. I mean, it looked much larger. It, it, my hometown, the business district along Main Street was about two blocks long. And then there were a couple of blocks going south from there, uh, again, a business district, and that really was it. And a lot of that has been gutted out by fires and by a terribly bad economy, really, over the last 30 to 40 years. And the, the economy isn't getting any better. If you drive 15 miles across the state line into Pennsylvania, you'll see things are much, much better, even though the, everything looks the same. As you get down into the Alleghenies, it's better because Pennsylvania is allowing fracking for natural gas. They can't do that. Uh, Sean Hannity was mentioning this on his program Friday. I happened to be driving home when I heard Hannity's remarks on it. He said, it's, it's Depression era there. It really is. It's almost like 1933. So a lot of the people that I grew up with who never got out of town or chose not to leave, and for many reasons that they stayed, family often is, is, is a you know, huge pull for a lot of people. Being in radio, I didn't have a choice, or television later on and then back to radio. I had to move to find work and continue to do so, bouncing all over the country. Friday, after listening to Hannity, I got home and I got a telephone call from a, an old friend who was telling me that one of my old neighbors had been arrested and he was cooking methamphetamine, according to police, inside his house. Now, I've known this guy since I was 10 years old. Uh, we probably spent more time tossing around a football in the backyards, uh, so much time that would equal a year of our lives if we added it all up. And he came from a really nice family, big family. They went to Mass every week. You'd, you'd look out the window and you'd see the whole family, eight kids and parents all going down the street. And we lived directly across the street. Well, eventually, my dad sold the house to my friend's mom, and the house was subdivided. And now my friend's family actually owns three houses in that neighborhood, the original main house and then two houses that were on my side of the street. And when I heard the story, I was a little bit taken aback, and I really just felt awful that, that his life had come to this. And a lot of people in that part of the world are desperate, and they are looking for any means to get ahead. Once more, the state will not allow people to come in and frack for natural gas, which would be a huge boost for the economy, not just for the people who are actually out working in the fields doing it, but it would also spur the economy throughout the entire region because those workers would then have money that they would be spending in the area. And they would be buying houses and new automobiles and going out to eat and, and all of these things. That's what really creates a local economy. And it almost becomes a self-sufficient or self, really it's a self-fulfilling uh, prophecy when something like that happens. And, and I, I, I just, I felt awful about it. I mentioned it online. I went to my Facebook page because I have a lot of old high school friends who still happen to be on Facebook and at least talking to me at Friday, they were talking to me still at the moment. And I made a comment about it and saying that it's sad and I was disappointed and it's just, it's a terrible thing that, that he must have felt so pressured that he had no other options to bring income in and that this happened. And then a couple of days passed and I heard from a few more friends who shared more details of the story with me and I still, still didn't put a whole lot into this. But then on Sunday, his brother, who was a, also a friend of mine, posted something on Facebook saying, hey, 
We're, we're glad. We think he's at rock bottom, obviously, now. And at this point, we think that the, this is the catalyst that will get him some help that he finally needs. And uh, it's, been, it's been very rough on our family. And I can completely concur with that. But what happened? About 20 people then in a row posted saying, oh, this is terrible. This is awful. He, he really does need to get help. And then I sat back and I started to think about this. I heard these terrible stories about meth labs exploding. Not only do they take out the home where they happen to be located, they can take out several buildings around them. And also sometimes the, the chemicals being used can end up creating a cloud that can float through a neighborhood and choke everybody to death. My sister lives just four doors away. She's a severe asthmatic. If that cloud were to reach her house, she would choke to death painfully in a matter of minutes. She has a daughter who lives with her who's 25 years old here in the next couple of weeks. And the daughter is a survivor, cancer survivor, has been for about now four or five years in remission. But cancer is something that compromises your immune system. So he was threatening my family, whether he, he, he didn't give it any thought, I'm sure, but he, he indirectly was threatening members of my family by engaging in this activity. Number two, as I wrote in my blog post, I pointed out that he also has family still living in two neighboring houses. He has a daughter living next door in my old house. Before she moved in there about a month ago, his nephew was living in that apartment in the front of the old house. His nephew was the chief of police. His nephew gave an interview the other day, I happened to see it online, where he said, well, state police had been involved in this investigation for three to four months. So wait a second. You as chief of police and the nephew of this man were living next door through most of this investigation. Did you know what was going on over there and how long it was going on over there? Did troopers tell you because you could have compromised it being a relative? He had a conflict of interest. I'm not, not trying to say that he's crooked. I'm just saying these are legitimate questions if you're a local taxpayer you have to ask. How long do you let something like this go on in a neighborhood? And then I heard from some other friends as well who said we saw him uh, sometimes meeting with some people in a parking lot between the family dollar and the bank, and they look to be unsavory characters. That's the other part of this. The people who actually, you know, the little guy cooks the meth up in his house or in a garage or in an empty warehouse somewhere, but there are big fish behind them, and those big fish can be very, very violent. So what if, what if people could actually identify them in a lineup? Would that endanger witnesses who actually saw him talking to these people? Do you see he brought a whole lot of hurt onto a little town that didn't necessarily need to be there, and he probably never thought of it that way? So I posted this yesterday as a blog post. It's been on my mind for a few days. But here we are. We're, we're, we're treating him like he's a victim. And I suppose he is of the economy, but good gosh, he could have blown up a neighborhood and killed people. In fact, his own family and my family. Well, social media being what it is today, I posted it at our website, then at our News Radio 1310 KLX Facebook page, but I also posted it at LinkedIn and on my personal Facebook page which means on my personal Facebook page, it's going to be seen by a lot of people from that old neighborhood, from my hometown. Now, you would think that reasonable people would look at something like that and they would say, you know, yeah, this is a pretty dangerous thing. But I went to the comments section this morning and, you know, I've never been called a libtard before. I've been here on air, what, a little over a year? I think that most people get the idea that's about the farthest uh, from my uh, political views. I mean, my guests run the gamut from, from 3% Idaho to John Birch Society to, well, heck, probably a couple of fascists now and then. I'll admit it. I mean, I'll give people a voice on this program that don't normally give a voice, especially people on the right, because they get so few opportunities. I, I'm, I'm telling you, though, the, the, the names that these people are calling me, one guy says, I'll be trolling you and your radio station. Yeah? You and whose army? Big deal. <laughs> so what? You know, your little piece of protoplasm that you must be a drug dealer too. That's, that's the way I look at that. And then some guy from Lima, Peru called me out as well. Lima, Peru, well, all right, so maybe he's a drug dealer. Maybe he's the big fish. Who do, who do these people really think they are? I, you know, and, and don't they have any, any sense of responsibility or, or you respect a dope dealer? I mean, is that it? You're trying to tell me that the dope dealer is the good guy here? Whatever was cooked up in that house and sold either shortened someone's life 
methamphetamine will do that, or it can kill someone quite quickly. So we don't know, but there could be a string of dead bodies already behind this guy. What the hell is wrong with you people? You're, you're attacking me for bringing this up? And, 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 you know, questioning who knew in the community, especially those in law enforcement, and could it have been shut down earlier, or what could have happened here? These are all legitimate questions. But it just shows you the depredation, just how, how far this society has collapsed. When a local drug dealer is the celebrated guy in all of this, and the victim in all of this, according to these people. And, and reasonable people should know better than all of that. Where the hell are your minds? You know, are you smoking it too? It's 26. Bill Colley with you on Top Story this morning on News Radio 1310, KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. Call it 818. We have a break coming up shortly. I will share with you, though, I have had a couple of quieter messages, people who did not go public with it. Uh, but I got another message from an old high school friend that said, Thank you for bringing it up. Thank you for saying it. We're all concerned about it. But we just don't feel in a small town we can speak up about it because people are trying to intimidate us. And then I got a message from another friend of mine who I would recommend nobody ever mess with. And he said, I think we need to take drug dealers out and just execute them. I don't go that far. I grew up with this guy. I think he's redeemable. I think he genuinely will feel sorrow. Or he already does, uh, and he's already looking for repentance. But I'm telling you right now, all of you guys out there who played in the band with him, or who've been, uh, who've been cooking this stuff up with him, or you've been smoking dope with him, or whatever else you've been doing over the last 25, 30 years, all of you guys who are now in your 50s and should know better, you're not really the majority in all of this. John Q. Publix got no toleration for people who, who are cooking up methamphetamine. Because most people, decent, respectable people, God-fearing people, would prefer you go away. And if it would require locking you all in dungeons for the rest of your lives, the remainder of your lives, they would support that. And as I just said, other friends of mine would support lining you up against walls and gunning you down. Problem solved. You may not think that's compassionate, but Americans are running out of patience, at least those few decent Americans who are still left out there and who had to deal with this political correctness and this, 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 runaway, this runaway view that somehow... Breaking the law is hip and cool, and peddling poison to people is cool. And I'm sorry I don't see it that way, but uh, apparently I'll never be able to go home again. Gosh, it just breaks my heart. 20 minutes after 8 o'clock, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, NewsRadio1310.com. We're at 24. As I mentioned earlier, Prosecutor Grant Loeb's is going to join us in the next hour of the program between 9 and 10 o'clock. He'll also have an opportunity to take some of your telephone calls right here on Top Story with Bill Colley on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. If you'd like to touch base with me on the other side of the break, 736 0300, that's 736 0300.